what's more important to you, personality or looks? And I'm like, well, personality, but he can't have a head like a kicked in Milo tin. What is one thing you'd like to thank Maths for? Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, I don't think Yahoo's gonna allow that. No. <laughs> oh, shit. Who the hell is that? Who's here? Hello, and welcome to Yahoo's first ever All Star Maths reunion. I'm your host, Lachlan Gurdon. Today we're going behind the edit on Australia's biggest reality TV show, Married at First Sight. To celebrate 10 seasons, we're bringing together some of the series' most iconic and memorable brides and grooms to talk about their time on the show, compare experiences, and answer questions fans have always wanted to know. Welcome everyone. I want to start off by chatting about the most recent season of Maths. Selena, I'll start with you. What's it like watching the show when you know how it works? Watching it and obviously having to experience it firsthand. I feel like our season was unique because we did shoot th through COVID. True, true, so true, I feel true. like our rules and the environment that we were put in was a lot more intense. And that's why when we were able to see and be with each other in the same room, it was just like explosive. Everything happened. That actually makes a lot of sense. I didn't even think about on it. camera. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like the, every other season, you were allowed to catch up. Olivia, you said before the show had even started, you weren't going to be watching it. Talk me through that decision. Um. So I knew that I'd be way too triggered to watch it. Like having gone through what I went through with our season, and um, I knew that I didn't want to. And then when it actually premiered, I was like, maybe I should watch it so I can use my voice and maybe stick up for like cast members that are going to get a hard time and it got to pressing play and I just couldn't do it like I got the shakes and felt like I was going to be sick and I couldn't do it I couldn't support I could not support Married at First Sight Australia. Did anyone else feel that way that you were like I can't watch it or? I just didn't watch it because I couldn't be stuffed with it to be honest with you. <laughs> I think it's just such a crock of crap and I think as the years have progressed through the show and you can see that from say year two to Jess and Cyrell's year to our year. I didn't, I watched your year but then I just feel as though it's getting so far removed from vested love itself and that it's just like really milking these poor everyday Australians that some of them, look, 50% of them do go on to find love. I went on naively to find love, but I also knew what I was going to gain out of it. I'm not going to lie. I had ulterior motives as well as I... I was pretty honest with myself. I knew that probably I wouldn't find love, but I just think that, yeah, it's got so far removed from, I've just rambled so much. I don't even know what the question no, was. No, you said um, Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. In summary, it's becoming more disingenuous. Yeah, it's, it's, dis yeah. it's becoming more disingenuous. Al, I know you've met a few of the season 10 cast members now. What do you think of them? Yeah, they're, they're actually pretty entertaining. Like when I watched it, cause I watched a little bit of um, this season, season 10 and it was like, Pretty, um, it was pretty funny. Um, a lot of drama, which I like to watch sometimes. And um, <laughs> I went out to the Easter show with them, like the other the other week. Some of the public were like really rude to them as well, which I found like really surprising. Yeah, they're like some girl comes. I don't know if I swear on here, but I'll do it anyway. Some girl like comes up and goes, "You're a c to like a bunch oh, of them." I don't think Yahoo's gonna allow that. No. <laughs> <laughs> What did you think of the new season, Jack? How did it compare to your season? Yeah, look, I, I think the way that I've really looked at this year's season, uh, again, I haven't watched it in its entirety. I've only watched highlights. So I, the reasoning behind that is I actually struggled to connect a lot with this season, which I've heard a lot of people did. And I've said this uh, to multiple people. I, I don't really know how other way to put it, but it just seemed very forced. The drama seemed very... Everything was good and then something would happen and then something else would happen and something else would happen. It just didn't seem to flow. Selena, you've also met some of the season 10 cast now. What was it like meeting them and how did that compare to what they were like on TV? I bumped into Harrison whilst they were filming. I didn't know oh. who he was because my, my best friend and her husband actually live in Sky Suites now so it's quite triggering Shut whenever up. I have to go visit. I crossed the street so I don't have to like walk directly. I went and stayed there afterwards just to no. like relive the experience. Yeah, no. true. True story. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, Harrison was lovely. Like everyone that I've met have been really lovely. And yeah, I don't like to base people on yeah. pigeonhole them off the show. Mm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because I don't like it when that's done to me or to any of my fellow friends, Max <laughs> friends. Woo. Um, so yeah, every everyone's been really lovely yeah. so far. So far. I feel like the person everyone has been chatting about the most this season is definitely Harrison. He's definitely the most controversial groom this year. Olivia, I feel like it's fair to say you were one of the most talked about people on last year's season. I guess, what would your advice be 
not necessarily to Harrison, but there's also people like Bronte and Alyssa, people that are facing backlash. What advice would you give those people after the show? I think the best advice I could give anybody who's copying backlash after the show is probably keep your head down for a while because coming off the show and going through that sort of trauma, your brain's scrambled eggs. So you don't want to be speaking to the public while the iron's hot and not being able to articulate yourself properly. On a more positive note, if we could all go around, what is one thing you'd like to thank MAFS for? Um, I'm thankful for MAFS for giving me um, clout. Oh, get it, girl. Oh, wait, is that a good answer? You're amazing. <laughs> there is nothing that I would change about you. Yeah. Not the clout aspect so much, but it's completely changed my life. Although I do go through the sh I've just bought my first house at 36. I own my, yeah, thank you. Congrats, just like my, my life has changed, changed tremendously. I've been able to help my family. Yeah. I've been able to um, invest money into my parents' businesses when they were struggling and different things. I'm like actually living my best life. Mm -hmm. And I love it. And I wouldn't swap it for the world. Woohoo! Nice. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what am I grateful for? Yeah, what am I grateful for? Um, Oh man, I think I'm grateful for two things, which one was my relationship with Jackson. That would be remiss to not mention that because although it didn't last, it definitely raised the bar and the standards on how I want to be treated. So he, he, did, he did do a really good job for a really long time at treating me really lovely. But then there's also like, I obviously did go through a lot, which was awful. I am grateful for the platform and the opportunities, although few and far between, I am grateful for what I, the platform in which I've been able to create something for myself. Like I wasn't, I wasn't given anything other than a, a platform from the show. Um, it took away more than it gave me, but I feel like with the platform, I'm able to do something for myself and save my own damn life. For me, coming like post-show, like I learnt so much about myself and self-worth. I didn't realise how, I guess, uncomfortable I was within my own skin like I had bleach blonde hair I had my blue contacts in and that's the only way that I would leave the house feeling the feeling contacts. beautiful yeah because I mean growing up you know I didn't have it like I didn't switch on the TV and see anyone that looked like me or had any like toys or superheroes that were Asian that were cool. Like even Sailor Moon had blonde hair and blue eyes herself, you know, like, so for me coming off that and like really being comfortable with my own skin, doing that healing and hopefully someone else can turn on their TV and be like, Selena looks like me, her eyes are shaped as like, like mine. And that's, that's awesome. You know, this that's really beautiful empowering. and we are right. beautiful. We're all beautiful in our own way. You get messages of girls that have I, said that. Yeah, to you. and that ever. it honestly is like it gives me goosebumps. So, yeah, there needs to be more. I mean, diversity in general, but more Asian representatives in media in general, and hopefully, <laughs> yeah. hopefully you're one of them. <laughs> yeah, well, just like wow. now that I have like more, this is what more, I'm trying to say. More. Now that I have this platform, like I have to put myself out there now because I feel like I have a responsibility. Really yeah. nice. Sounds what I'm most grateful for. Look, I've I've met the love of my life, Courtney, through Aww. indirect. Yay. Show, which is which is um, a beautiful thing. It's not that the show placed us together, but it, it definitely gave me the avenue to be mm -hmm. in the same circles that I wouldn't have been in. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing, she wouldn't have been in those circles if she wasn't on her show. I happened to stumble across this beautiful girl and met her. So that's definitely something that I'm probably mm. most ecstatic about post-show. Oh, sh who the hell is that? I don't know. Who's here? Hi! Hi. 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 Hi.
meet you as well. Hi. Welcome, Janelle. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Yahoo studio. No, this actually looks amazing. Oh, thank you for coming. I feel like I don't belong here. <laughs> your season only finished airing a few weeks ago now, but how has your life been since it's ended? Lucky, I left a long time ago in the experiment. Let's be real here. <laughs> I got the heck out of there. <laughs> I'm actually okay. I, yeah. I healed properly. Cool. I healed. I moved on. Yeah. It wasn't hard to move on, you know, from him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 what else? Who have we got? Hello, it's a party! Hi! Hello! Harrison's hey, yeah. coming in next. <laughs> I'm joking. Yay! Yeah. We can get into the deep chat and everything. Oh, the deep chat. With the maths experience just ending on air, what is it like being released into the world and dealing with the post-maths life? Do you want to take this? You can go first. <laughs> I think you should. Okay. <laughs> I think the weird part about this is that getting recognised is so wild. Mm. Like, I went to the Easter show and probably every five minutes people were coming up and taking photos of us. And I don't think that's something that you don't really realise is going to happen until it happens. Yeah. And you're just like, this is a really different world. Yeah. I don't know, I feel like everything's pretty back to normal for me. I know that's the opposite of what that's you just said. Me, yeah. but I, I don't know, I think it just, it doesn't feel as heavy as you make it out to be just then, no offense. Well, I also moved like, cities, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you moved cities. I think the only real like difference is like seeing my head on the internet every second TikTok. <laughs> you're like, oh, that's me. I was like, oh, there I am again, being angry on the internet. <laughs> Specifically this face. <laughs> we were just discussing season 10 and our thoughts, but how did you find watching the show? Okay, um, <laughs> I think for me, I know a lot of people talk about like the edit and how people are perceived, the famous edit, but I feel like it captures the main essence of the feeling of the room. So I wasn't too shocked or like blown away by the famous edit. So I was like, yeah, that, mm. that happened. But obviously there was a steer in narration, but thoughts and feelings, I think it was pretty true to home for me mm. anyway. Yeah, I have to agree. I think again, like it's the essence was definitely there. Um, I think a lot of things don't get shown because you're filming for so long, like, you know, but you know, if they had to pick like the top line of what happened in most relationships, I think that was shown. Um, but yeah, it was pretty accurate on my end in terms of my story. So mm. it was definitely hard to watch. Like I'm not a pretty crier. So that was, <laughs> <laughs> it was the Botox. The Botox really makes you cry ugly, eh? <laughs> I guess, what do you guys think? Like, does the edit exist? Like. You guys are saying you didn't feel it, but did you guys feel like the edit affected you or? Someone dig my grave. Do you want to go? No, no, Do you want me to go? I, no, you go. I, th I think it's definitely dramatised. Like there were moments where like I had red devil eyes from crying and then it went to like normal and went to red. And, but like the general gist is there. Like I am quite a outspoken, loud person. So you, got, you definitely got that on camera, like what the girls were saying, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, I said what I said, I did what I did. It's just, it's what they choose to focus on. You know what I mean? I'm a happy-go-lucky girl, but I can also be quite staunch and I can be quite opinionated. So what they're focusing on, that's a particular look into a certain component of my personality. That doesn't necessarily mean that that is an edit. That is just one foresight of who I am at that particular time. So I think it's kind of fair. I don't feel like what was shown on TV was an accurate representation of my full character. I don't think it was an accurate representation of my relationship on the show. Um, I don't, even when we were filming with like the experts and stuff and they would throw jabs like at the last commitment ceremony and they were saying things about my relationship and neither Jackson or I understood. And it's because they were saying things to fit into the edit of the story that they were steering us down. We're talking about things that I guess didn't make the edit. Janelle and Evelyn, you both weren't in the final reunion episode. I was an intruder, so they didn't show the intruders. During the dinner party, I had just come back from holidays, so I just like really wasn't in a mood to... You guys all know what happens at the dinner parties. Everyone's speaking over each other. Yeah, I don't know yeah. about <laughs> your year, but... Yeah, it's a bit hectic. Yeah. Everyone's, you know, 
coming back with a vengeance to like get their last say in and say their last two pieces and I just wasn't in the mood to say anything so I didn't want to so that's probably why so yeah. I just kind of chilled. I reckon not even half of the drama that happened at the reunion showed. There was definitely a moment at the reunion where Adam tried to apologise to me um, and on paper it was a good apology but I didn't want to forgive someone if they weren't apologetic for the right thing. So when I tried to clarify his apology, it just came back with the same defensiveness, the same, like a, a whole new layer of excuses. And I was just like, this man still to this day can't give me an apology. And yeah, I really, I want to forgive him, but it's hard to forgive someone when they don't take accountability. Take accountability. Yeah. I wasn't surprised with that not being shown. And I also am not surprised I wasn't on the couch because I think nothing new had happened. He didn't, Adam didn't have any new revelations and accountability. Mm. I wasn't going to forgive him. So the story was done. Nothing new was happening. Same, same. Yeah, same, same. It would have yeah, just been repetitive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I get it. I want to go back to the start of your maths experiences and how it was like getting on. I guess let's test this out. Raise your hand if you were scouted for maths. Yeah. Okay, just the two of you. Ridiculously good looking okay. ones. I know. So let's start with you, Al. How does that work? What is the offer that comes through? And then what do you have to think about? Um, so I remember I was at work and I got a DM on Instagram and like, hey, do you want to be on a dating show? And then I was like, heck yeah. Like I thought it was like Love Island or something. So um, Ironically. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, why not? And then um, did the Zoom interview. And then in the Zoom interview, they're like, yeah, it's like maths. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll just do it anyway. Evelyn, was that the same process for you when you got scouted? So my part of the cast process was I was living in London for like six years and COVID happened. I had just broken up with my long-term boyfriend. I kept getting that yearly call. How about this year, Evelyn? I'm like, no, not in the right place. And I was like dating here and there. Things didn't really work out. And then like, I don't know, something in my gut just felt right mm. this year. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. I am ready. With with mine, I um, my boss actually nominated me after going into work every Sunday and like. What do you mean by nominated? Put my like um, initial application in, and then he emailed it to me and he's like, Haley, like this is way too um, like it's actually really big the initial application very, very form. Very and I remember like, and because like I do love a chat, I remember filling it out, and then um, like the answers were so long that I was actually there for hours and hours and hours on end. One of the questions they asked me, they're like, oh what's more important I'm totally going off subject here but I love a microphone and a rant um, <laughs> um, but they're like they're like oh um what's more important to you personality or looks and I'm like well personality but you can't have a head like a f in Milo tin and all their faces just went like and from that moment like I just knew I was on <laughs> <laughs> then I walked into my job the week later and I put in my notice because August was like three months away and my boss was like, why are you quitting? Like, you don't even know if you're on. I'm like, no, nah, I'm definitely on. And then I was on. Anyone else have to do a duck walk when you did the yes. STI test? Yeah. What do you mean? I was like, what's a yeah, duck walk? Like Get the squat on the floor walk. and waddle. What do you mean? It's what? Like it's to check what? I think that's a physical it's test. It's a physical test. Not, but that not, was part yeah. of the STI. <laughs> nothing to do <laughs> with STIs. <laughs> yeah. Because I went to do the STI test. They were like, can you do a duck walk and I was like, what yeah. do you mean? Okay. I, I have a really weird experience because I didn't think to apply for these shows at all. Um, and what happened was The Bachelor had reached out to my agency and they were like, oh, hey, like, you know, would you now want to do an interview? And I remember doing all the interviews and then they still made me apply online. And so I applied online. I did the one minute video that you have to make. Oh, yeah. there, you know, it's still on my iPad somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So you think you're done with the application, then like one minute video. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was like, you know what? I don't even watch The Bachelor. <laughs> I was like, if I'm going to go on a one time experience, like this is going to be math. So I wouldn't say I walked in there like thinking I was going to fall in love. I think it was a possibility. I'm a huge fan of the show, like massive fan of the show. I've seen every second of all your seasons. <laughs> <laughs> I was very aware it's there's a very high percentage that this is not going to happen but I'm a very YOLO person like for example I once entered a drag queen competition as a bio queen and I won it just because I was bored yeah. and so I was bored and I was like F I'm just gonna go on maths. <laughs> no my thought process was because it was really like it was heavy lockdowns in in um, New South Wales at the time. Well, and like I was, four months in at that point. Yeah and I was super super bored I was just working my life was really boring and I just want to like just go away I want to be on a TV show as well. <laughs> So, um, you yeah. were made for TV, Al. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
know, yeah. this is what I've been trying to tell everyone. And I was like, yeah, TV, I like to TV, clout. I'm like, what's, yeah, why not? Like, oh, gonna crack. <laughs> but then I remember like, I remember going into the interviews actually. And um, I think they liked me because I remember I spoke to them and I was like, yeah, look, like I got nothing to lose. And I know maths is like, you can, you can either like, you know, make you look good or look bad. And I said to them, like, do you care? And I'm like, no, nah, you can make me a villain if you want. I was a villain. No. <laughs> 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 yeah. make you look like a villain. Mate, you are a golden <laughs> retriever. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and so I went into this mindset, I'm like, I'm gonna be just like crazy, like villain, like yeah. I wanna be that guy. But then it was like really hard to be and then yeah. Oh, were you trying to be a villain? I think I think the first like in the first like episode, but then I just couldn't yeah do it. Oh yeah, because it made you look like a bit of a narcissist, didn't they? Mm, no like, beginning, yeah. yeah. The clearest day there's this one thing and then there's just Al like sitting there with the <laughs> biceps and he's just there like yeah. I'm gonna be the best looking guy here. And then it goes neural, it flicks over and there's Mitch or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I was like, if I rate it myself out of 10, I'm an 11. Yeah, the oh, most people realised that you were innocent was when you said you didn't know how to do your laundry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would um, say that's innocent. <laughs> not doing your laundry is not innocent. <laughs> Wait, do you know how to do no. your laundry now? Heck no, mum oh does it. Oh my god. I can't believe the experts thought Adam was my match. I don't think they tried to stitch you up. I don't. It was explosive. You're the one who put yourself out there, so you deserve the, the backlash. There's a line that you don't cross. 